Hello, in this video I will discuss foot stretcher positioning in a rowing boat. Foot stretcher position affects the range of motion a person moves through when they take a rowing stroke. While forward and backward movement of a foot stretcher is easy to understand, up and down movement and angle changes are not as straightforward, so most of this video will look at the second two adjustments. For those who don't know what a foot stretcher is, this video is probably not for you. Anyway, in a rowing boat, special shoes are screwed to a shoe plate or a foot plate. This is then bolted to a foot stretcher, which connects to the hull of a rowing boat. There are three degrees of freedom, horizontal, vertical and rake. With a foot stretcher far to the bow, there is a larger finish angle and smaller catch angle. And in sculling, there is a bigger gap between the oar handles at the finish. This is the opposite when you move the foot stretcher to the stern. For sculling, this adjustment is used to set your finish position. Most people measure based on the gap between the handles when they sit in their finish position. For sweep rowing, there is no simple way to set your forward-backward position. One good way is to line up the seats at a set distance back from the line of work when sitting at the finish. Using a mark such as some tape beside the slide. Sykes Rowing described this method very well on their website and I've put a link to that in the description. Now moving on to rake and height. I will look at these at the same time as they interact with each other. Height is normally measured from the lowest point inside the shoe to the lowest point on the front edge of the seat. Rake is normally measured in degrees from the bottom of the boat to the foot stretcher. A smaller number means flatter shoes. Here we have some numbers for height. And here we have some numbers for rake. I won't look at the numbers in this video, I've just included them in case people are interested. So something a lot of people use when assessing catch position is whether a rower's shins are vertical. I think this is a pointless measurement, and hopefully I can convince you of this too by the end of the video. So what determines stroke length? Here are the major factors that I could think of. And out of them, how many can an individual change? Just three, and two of them are foot stretcher adjustments. This is one reason I think foot stretcher adjustment is important. Here we have pictures of Mirka Knapkova and Fiudby Eriksson, 2012 Olympic gold and silver medalists in the women's single school. They have very different catch positions. Why is this? One reason is different body proportions. If two people catch with vertical shins and have the same foot stretcher height, the person with proportionally longer ties will have less knee compression and less hip compression, unless they lean forward more to compensate, like Ericsson did. So look closely at this animation. It's not somebody sliding up the slide. It's somebody whose ties are getting magically longer. You can see if their shins are in vertical, the longer tie pushes the seat back and opens the knee and hip angles. If you lower the foot stretcher and insist shins can't go past vertical at the catch, you actually make the knee and hip angles even less compressed again. As you can also clearly see, if you raise the feet, you can increase the compression of the knee, and that means the seat can go further forward. However, we know from the real world it is not this simple, and in the next few slides I will explain why. First though, a better question to ask is what is the optimal catch position? I've measured knee angles at the catch from World Rowing Championships, and it was normal to see anywhere from 30 to 50 degrees. It's not always possible for two people to have the same angles with different body proportions without feet being way too low so they lift off their seat, or too high which makes it hard to rock over. This means there's not one optimal body position that will work for everybody. This might not seem relevant, but it is later. The higher your feet are, the further up the slide you can go before your heels begin to lift up. It is exactly the same with a flatter foot stretcher. 
It allows you to go further up the slide before your heels lift up. Now I will compare high and low feet on a Concept 2 Erg. I will compare four examples because out of nine people that I asked, only three go back to me. Despite this, I think there's a pretty good spread of examples. In example A, raising the foot stretcher resulted in increased knee and hip compression and therefore more stroke length with very little change to the shin angle. We can see more of the volunteers back as they have moved forward on the slide. If you look closely, you'll see the heels have lifted very little off the foot stretcher. This is why raising the foot stretcher increased compression and stroke length. This is not always the case. As the knee is higher, the ties are more vertical meaning more knee and hip compression. In example B, raising the feet has pushed the shins back. The thighs are again more vertical. And this has reduced the hip angle. But why did raising the feet cause the shins to change angle this time? The reason is less ankle flexibility. You can see a massive difference in how much the heels have lifted off the foot stretcher. If you remember back a few slides, I said lower feet reduces how far up the slide you can go before your heels lift. After this point, as you keep going forward, your heels begin to lift. This flattens your actual foot stretcher angle, allowing you to go even further forward. Now you're further forward and you have flatter feet. That's why your shins can go past 90 degrees. Conversely, with the high feet, you can go further up the slide before your heels begin to lift. You're already far forward by the time the heels lift. So as you keep pushing forward, your feet are not flat enough and the ankle flexibility stops your shins going any further forward. So with the high feet this time, knee angle has increased by four degrees meaning the knee is less compressed. But because the thigh is more vertical, the hips are still more compressed. So limited ankle flexibility counteracted raising the feet. Again, in example C, we see high feet means less flat feet. So the shins don't lean forward as much. Also, as the knee is higher, the thigh is more vertical. This means when the rower leans forward the same amount, the hip angle is much less. You can clearly see the less gap between the chest and thighs with the high feet. This can make it very hard not to round your back. In this example, knee angle has not changed. So finally, example D. Here, ankle flexibility is good, but not as good as example A. This means raising the feet has pushed the shins back a small bit, raised the knee, which made the thighs more vertical, which increased hip compression. In this example, knee angle has not changed. You can read these points yourself. But the main idea is ankle flexibility has a big effect on a rowing stroke and shins past vertical might not be bad because the knee angle might not be increased. I hope I've given a good introduction to foot stretcher adjustment. Thanks for watching.